Today we're on a very special Mother's Day mission, something I never imagined I would be doing, and this is something my grandfather actually used to do. We're on the hunt for a perfect egg-bearing female lobster, and we're actually gonna keep it. I'll explain more on why later. This is what we're looking for right here, but this one's a little bit too small and it's also got some injuries. You see it, it's missing a leg. We wanna get a good, healthy, strong one with a bunch of eggs. So I'm super excited to revive this program that my grandfather used to be part of. You've seen egg-bearing females a lot in the channel over the years and how important they are to the fishery and how we normally notch them and let them go with snacks. So the program that has been shut down for years is actually a hatchery program over in Bar Harbor and we've got the honor to be part of bringing it back to life. We're out here today trying to collect a good, healthy, egg-bearing female to bring in where they're gonna raise it and try to hatch the eggs. Scott. Yes, Cat. I got you something. What's up? Oh, for me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give it to Jace. Kai. Oh, this is a beauty heart rock. Took it right back after the camera. <laughs> yeah. Just it gave it to him and it took it. <laughs> Here's another one. You can see that she's already dropped most of her eggs. Again, we need one that's full of eggs. We're still looking for the perfect one. You like what you see? <laughs> so this is actually a shrimp. It's not a lobster, but it kind of gives you a rough idea of what they look like when they're that size. They're actually smaller than this. Here's one that's around two or three years old. It takes them about seven years to become a legal size. All right, we've got the perfect one. Look at all of her eggs. She's got about 30,000 eggs. This is the perfect candidate. Out of all of these eggs, only three or four of these lobsters will actually grow to full size, and that's the whole reason behind this hatchery program, is to try to decrease the mortality of these eggs. When they first hatch, they're basically little tiny sea fleas, and they actually live suspended in the water column for the first few months of their life. And while they're suspended in that water column, all kinds of different species of fish eat them. They're basically fish candy. After they shed multiple times while they're in the water column, they then grow large enough to sink back to bottom. Once they make it to bottom, they're much safer. They have protection and can hide from predators. So the goal is to raise these until they're old enough to sink back to bottom, which will decrease the mortality. Instead of 99% of these eggs dying, uh, we're hopeful that more like 70 or 80% of them will survive. We're gonna head in now. We're gonna meet Ben from the Oceanarium at the dock. He has all the special licenses required to collect this lobster. From there, we're gonna head on over to the Oceanarium and get her into her new home at the hatchery tank. She'll only be there temporarily, long enough to hatch the eggs. Then we're gonna give her a notch and release her back into the wild. You can have this egg, but I want that hat. <laughs> Good to see you. How you been? Nice. Doing all right. We got her in a tank back here. She's pretty big. Oh, boy, she's dark. Oh my. Oh, look at all those. She's boy, good and healthy. She doesn't have a notch yet. I figured we'd wait and notch her when we let her go after she's done hatching. Let's see, it's like the way to do it. She's a pretty big one. She's, uh, yeah, she's, she's probably three pounder. I think it's like 10,000 eggs per pound of lobster. Yeah, she's like, probably got 20, 30,000 eggs. We can, uh, we can keep a couple. Hatch them, yeah, I'd be interested. The metric is like two out of every 50,000 to actually make it to adulthood. So like so. six in the wild, six would survive to yeah, adulthood. If, if even that. So, so hopefully we can so. increase that. To if, we get, if we get at least six. At least six, we're doing good. Okay, that's the goal. <laughs> If we can release her back to the wild and get six, then we've mission accomplished, or seven. <laughs> seven, we gotta get seven. Ben's got a cooler, we're gonna load her up and head for the Oceanarium. You want some water? There should be plenty right there. We've also got a bubbler here for her, so keep things nice and aerated. We can help you lug her up to the Oceanarium we go. All right, we made it to the Oceanarium. Let's get her in her home. Ben, welcome, good to welcome. see you again. Likewise, it's been a see. long time. Yeah, <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> Look at the size of that skull. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta watch out for that. It's pretty crazy they actually swim, right? Yeah. They can, yeah. yeah. Look at all the barnacles on them. The darnest thing about it, all those black spots you see around the rim there, those are, those are eyes, yeah. Oh, eyes? Eyes. Oh, so these are like creatures. intelligent creatures. These aren't just a shell and a muscle. No. They're pretty complicated animals, truthfully. This is what we need right here. The hatchery is built into a couple of different bits and pieces. Big thing with lobsters, when they first start off, they're in this, uh, this kind of shrimp-like plankton form, and they float around in the water for a couple of weeks to a month or so, and they go through a 
a couple of molts until they get to what they call stage four. And at that point in time, they're large enough that they start settling down to the bottom and living life like normal actual lobsters. These are fancy tanks called pseudoprisals. And essentially, they're for plankton-type animals. They're often seen with jellyfish, but they would work with a baby lobster as well. We put them in here, and they've got a circulating water column current that keeps things suspended and moving about. As they get older, and they uh, will we'll move them into successive tanks, and once they reach that stage four and they start settling down to the bottom, we'll move them into this little square tank down here. And we've got these corrugated sheeting here that should serve as nice little caves for them and help protect them from, well, one another, actually. They're quite cannibalistic for most of their lives. Mom's gonna be living in here. All these tanks are connected together. The babies, they'll hop in here, and we can either scoop them out from here or we've got a collection system on the other side here, so if they go down the drain, they'll still be safe. Nice. And we can scoop them out of that and put them in there and since it's all the same water there's no need to acclimate or worried about them getting used to the water it's just all all perfect and ready to go for them got a drip feed going for her right now we'll uh increase that flow rate just a little bit is that to help her acclimate essentially yeah that our oh, our water conditions are never quite the same as what they're experiencing out in the wild so we just want to make sure that we're not shocking her system as she goes into the water because like you and me we're endothermic we we maintain our own body heat and our own water, like body conditions. Lobsters, not so much. So if you, if you abruptly change them from one environment to another, it takes them a little bit of time for their bodies to adjust to that, and that, that can be dangerous to them. Lobsters are pretty hardy, though. They can, they can be comfortable anywhere. I've seen, I've seen some aquariums run them as cold as like 35 degrees, and yeah. some of them run as high as 70. So as long as she's got time to get used to it, she should be, she should be golden. Got a point up where you got Jake. And give away the hot spot. <laughs> yeah, some, somewhere in here. Yeah. We're going to release all the babies back into our hot spot when we go to release them. So that way, seven years from now, we can catch them all. Well, that's the, that's the plan, yeah. <laughs> so getting from stage one to stage four, that takes about a month or so. During that planktonic stage, they're floating around in the water, and pretty much everything eats them. That There's yeah. no defense for them. They're about the size of a grain of rice. And so everything from fish to sea cucumbers will go after them. Two out of every 50,000 actually make it to adult. But getting them through that plankton stage, once they are down into the sand, they can right. start hiding Should, in rocks. Yeah. It's a lot easier for them to survive at that point. Hopefully, their their long term survival rate will be a lot better if we can get them to that stage. How many do you think you're going to get to that stage? Well, uh, it depends on how well this works. So <laughs> <laughs> this is a new type of system. We're compiling a couple of different um, different ideas that have been proposed by different hatcheries. Some hatcheries have recommended using these pseudo to keep them suspended, but we're also utilizing some bubblers, which were recommended by some of the local scientists because mm -hmm. um, again they're they're very cannibalistic so those those bubble curtains will help to agitate and, and prevent them from grabbing on to one another gotcha. and chewing on each other yep. too much I've seen some studies that have found as much as 80% survival of their, nice. of their of their eggs yeah pretty darn good crazy. honestly yeah, that would be quite an increase we're not necessarily expecting that many yep. to uh, that highest survival but we're gonna we're gonna shoot for that and that at minimum we'll we'll have a better idea of what's going on and we'll be able to iterate the, on this on the next one we did a small scale version of it last year we got about 100 lobsters in, and we've got one of them still. So 1% survival is pretty pretty good for lobster standards. We're hoping for two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in your sample last year, you said you kept one of the little babies in a tank, and you're trying to grow it. Mm -hmm. That's something that we're actually interested in trying to do as well. We got the licenses in place to try to do that. So maybe when it comes time to go release these, maybe we can keep one of them in our own tank for ourselves and study it and watch it grow. I think that would be super fun. It could be that fish in the fish tank that lasts way too long because it's, it's a pet that could literally outlive you. So be careful what you wish for when you get a baby lobster, but I think it would be super cool. It's very easily could do so. Around about 65 at the moment, oh, I believe. Yeah. A little bit on the warmer side, but it's it feels about in line with what we've got in the tank here. Dan, we'll probably be aiming for rearing them around 50 to 55 degrees or so. Yeah, she's pretty aggressive. Yeah, um, she's, uh, I mean, she looks that healthy. Tank she came after you. And it wouldn't be surprising if she's a bit more aggressive, considering she's carrying those eggs. Right, right yeah, they always are in the traps, too. The ones with eggs are always super aggressive. So in the wild, as Ben said, the mortality of the lobsters is only around 1% of them survive to adulthood. The goal here is to try to get more 
than 1%. Anything above 1%, we're gonna call this a success. So it's actually closer to 0.001%. <laughs> 0.001, yeah. okay. Not 1%, 0.001. So two out of 50,000 eggs survive to adulthood in the wild. That's why they have so many eggs, I guess. There's kind of two different strategies that you can have for reproduction. There's quantity and quality. Right. Humans, we're, we're a quality. We put a lot of effort into a very small number of, of kids, and so we expect most of them to survive. Whereas most marine animals, they go with the quantity approach. They'll have as many eggs as they possibly possibly can and put as little effort into any of them as possible and they say you know what good luck kids most <laughs> of you will own. die but some of you won't and yeah. that's all that we need yep. I know some that do that. <laughs> <laughs> what's pretty cool also is that all of the fish that are eating these baby lobsters in the water column eventually go on to die and sink to the bottom and then get eaten by the lobsters again so it's 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 all of life it's all a very important ecosystem it seems a little bit brutal that you know so many of them die off many marine animals rely on this as right. a huge piece of food yep. source that's kind of one of the keys of filter feeders in general lobsters actually they put more effort into their young than a lot of species do there are you know, cod for instance will have literally millions of eggs in a in a single clutch starfish and sea urchins and whatnot they, yeah. they, there are times when they they're what are called broadcast spawners they get together in big piles and just release all the eggs and sperm out into the water and it will dye the water like so Whoa. it's so murky you can't even see through it from just all of the genetic material that's in there and the fish come uh, come by and they swarm into these areas because there's just so much available food for them so our water is currently at about 58 and she is around about 55 last i checked so that should be right about perfect i i think we're ready when you are all right we'll be through in her home let's go ahead uh, yeah we'll, we'll bring her on in all right Ooh. She is doing good. There we she go. She's feisty. Do you want to unband her or leave her banded? Let's not go ahead and unband her. Make her a bit more comfortable while she's in here. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't time that super well. There we go. All set? Good to go. All right. Welcome to your new home. There she goes. So we got a little bit of sand in there so that she can dig around in that and hopefully get comfortable. But we're not putting any any rocks or any caves in there because we don't want any of those babies to get, get stuck and lodged inside gotcha. of that. Because they almost certainly won't survive if that happens. So how long do you think before they hatch? They usually will start hatching in, in early June, I believe. In the next month or two, we'll, uh, we'll see them coming out. So she's now into her new home. Everything went good. She looks like she's doing fantastic. Uh, we do need, again, some names for her. So if anybody has any name ideas, Feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, we'll go through them. Whoever gets the most likes on the name will be her name. And we're going to continue monitoring and updating as things progress. Uh, we'll do some big milestone updates along the way, but the Oceanarium will be doing some more frequent updates along the way. So if you guys want to follow along, follow both here and the Oceanarium. I'm super excited to see how it goes and see how many can get raised to that stage four and released back into the ocean. We'll be releasing her back into the ocean just as soon as she drops her eggs. We'll raise the babies to stage four and take them out and let them go at a hot spot. We're not gonna tell anybody where we let them go. <laughs> so the Oceanarium is on Instagram. I'll leave a link to their Instagram in the description. You guys can head on over, follow along. And we'll be doing lots of updates on this tank and, uh, and the babies as, uh, as they hatch out of there. So Ben has given us a clam. We're gonna try to feed her. I don't know, do they eat? Does it usually take them a little bit to get yeah, she probably she, won't go she after it. It's she might eat out of aggression. Day. I'm gonna drop it right on her and see what she does. Oh, she caught it! <laughs> That's a surprised response. Yeah. So you often see that when the clam first comes down. You usually see the antenna wiggle around a little bit. So you figure this out if there's food in the area and if she wants to eat it, but not an interested in look to me. Awesome, appreciate it. Ben. Thanks for your help. Always, always a pleasure. <laughs>